Hello everyone, how are you? Welcome back to the channel. The Zod brand has got quite a few on sale through Banggood and on AliExpress, so a Zod Dart XL that I've got is in need of an upgrade, so it was a really good time to purchase a new kit and give this a rebuild. My kit has arrived. There's no electrics because all the electrics I've got installed in this craft here. As you can see, it's copped a bit of a battering. There's a lot of hot glue on it. There's a lot of scars on it from hard landings and the nose is cracked. It's got a lot of tape on it. It's got a lot of glue, especially on the nose. So we'll start pulling this apart. First thing I want to do is get the electronics out, the speed controller and uh, the flight controller. We'll get all that out. And at the same time, we're going to take out the GPS and the Express LRS receiver as well. Most of all my components I've just hot glued in. I just find it's a lot better way to remove if you need to remove them just by using a heat gun and heating things up. It comes out quite well. I do also plan to try and tidy up some of the wires as well and possibly shorten some. Uh, like I said, the end product's still not going to be the finish because there's certain things I do want to do still to this and um, there is a bit of extra wiring that's not needed that I'm keeping as well for the moment. So we just unplug the motor and ESC and then everything should pretty much just lift out and we'll just put that aside for the moment. So all these other wires I'm going to have to feed back through the wings. One annoying part I did find with this build was the screws that hold the wings in are right in the spot where the flight controller goes. You won't be able to get those screws out because of all your cables and all of your plugs. I don't have the connectors on this so I've just got an open hole there for my wiring to go straight through from the wings. And we'll slide out the spar and the other side should just come out too if we carefully feed the, the plugs through the hole in the fuse. Um, that wing will just come straight off as well. So that's the disassembled Zod Dart XL ready for its makeover. So just as a matter of interest, that's the full weight of the plane that it was without the battery. Um, so we're reading 878 grams. It was pretty heavy. Mind you, it has got the Alpha 10 uh, VTX in the top canopy, so that, that won't be in the new one. So it'll be interesting to see a weight difference, just as a comparison. 878 grams. So we'll start with the disassembly of all the components in the in the craft using a hot air gun. Why well, I like to use hot glue as quite often I'm repositioning things and changing things in craft. It just makes things a lot easier to pull out when you need to if you just hot glue them in. Mind you, it does add a little bit of extra weight to the plane, so keep that in mind if you're going to use hot glue. It's just my preferred method to do it, that's all. A lot of hot glue. There's hot glue under the board here from when the nose broke. Yeah, there's a lot of hot glue. We'll clean up all the equipment, get all the hot glue off what's there, and uh, come back and, and we'll start on with the rebuild. So this is the kit. This is the unassembled kit. So it comes with no electrics. Got it from Banggood. They had it on sale for a hundred Australian dollars, so that's a good thing with Banggood at times, they, they really put some good sales on. So if you need to refresh your planes, or you get a, or get a, a new kit just for spare parts, it's the best time to do it. Everything came well packaged, no damage, the box is in awesome condition. So, good work to the couriers and the uh, packaging team so everything's here I got everything here except for electrics like I said so a few spares and the carbon rods um, for the fuse which is here there it is there so there's a heap of carbon rods in there to strengthen the fuse which is good so I'm going to start straight with the fuselage uh, before gluing the fuselage you've got to make sure the two long carbon fiber rods that go along each side of the fuse. So that'll be your main ones going through here. So you've got to attach all these first. Um, after that, you can insert the plywood parts one and three into the slot of either part of the fuse before finishing gluing the whole fuselage together. One and three, it said. So this one here we need. And just got to find one 
uh, which must be this one here, I'd say for the battery by the look. That would be it. The nose of the plane is going up that way. So left side, right side. Uh, you your two carbon fibre rods here. One's longer than the other. So the left side here has the longer side. The right side here has the shorter side. Uh, we also need our battery tray. And we've also got a little uh, spot for the flight controller to go on. So let's start this process off. We'll get the fuse together and um, then we'll come back and have a look at possibly doing a few of the electronics after that. We'll see. So I'm just going to use super glue mostly on things like the carbon rod just to get them in. And I'm going to use my favourite hot glue just because I just like to be able to heat it up and be able to uh, replace them easy and I find hot glue is great for that just to be able to heat it up and and move it without damaging too much so super glue I'm just going to use just for the rods and maybe for the, the timber as well That's a good thing with super glue. And what I what I might do even is put a smear of hot glue over the top of that. We'll see, I don't, don't think it's probably needed. Okay, so next will be the two timber pieces. So we need the battery tray, piece one and piece three. This section here, I had my ESC on. If you've got a small Velcro strap, now's a good time to probably connect that up. Um, I don't think I've got one, uh, but in saying that too, I just hot glued my ESC down. It's really a big deal. I'm gonna put a bit of hot glue on this edge of the timber, and that will sit and hold, hold it down here. Another thing too I'm going to do is get my battery strap and have this already put in. It's easier to do it now than, uh, than later on once it's all glued in. Put it under here, that way it's much, much more easier to slide. Here is still loose and so is the main fuse so what I might do is in the bottom here I'm going to squeeze some super glue in along through here and I can get that open so up there I'll use super glue and also here I'll use super glue as well and that's probably it for the amount of super glue I'm going to be using at this stage we'll see all right next I'm going to put a couple of magnets on make sure you glue them on the right way so on the back here you want these two number 10 Right, so next we're going to do these two pieces here, number four. Alright, next we're after is number two. And this one here, it just goes in like that. Right, so you've got four of these all up, so the two here with the screw Scoring points uh, go on the wings, so we don't need them at the moment. These are the two we need, and they're just going to go on just like that. If you plan on using these connectors here for your servos, um, it might be a good idea to screw them in first uh, before you glue this on. Once that is done, we'll put hot glue around the nose and then push the nose cone on. So that's the fuse still going, that's the nose cone glued on and the two side pieces. We've got the motor mount here, so we need timber piece number eight, two sevens, a nine and the six. That makes up the, the motor mount. This is your bottom piece. You'll have these two sitting in here like this. Now this one goes on next. And that piece just goes on the back here. It's interesting how they've done it this way. But yeah, it basically is going to sit like that. So once it's all glued up and ready to go in, it might pay even to, it's pro probably not necessary totally, but you could probably almost put your engine on, I guess. But it slides in. So again, I'll probably use super glue for this. And it just slides in 
just like that. That's a lot better than uh, than what I had on there before. So I'll show you the difference. That's a big difference between the two. Much better system than what we had here. I had a lot of hot glue on the back of this. It, it worked, but it, um, yeah, it, I always thought that was a pretty well badly designed motor mount in the first place. Now that it's in, we'll add a bit more glue to the timber itself to hold the joints together and also down into the foam so it's not going to move. Now we'll add a bit of Loctite to all of our screws and install the motor to the back of the craft. So that's pretty much got all the fuse done. Nothing much else to add to that yet until we start doing the electrics. So I'm going to move on now to the wings. We're going to start doing that and um, after that we'll put in the electrics. So we've got two wings out. We've got our, your black leading edge protectors, which will go on the front here, and your little vertical stabilizers. You also have to cut out the aileron here. You need to make your cuts in here and on the other side on both of them. So that the cuts are already in for the vertical stabilizers, so they just need to be glued in. So I'm going to let that one sit now for a while, that's the both wings done. Um, I've still got to cut the ailerons out yet, but you don't need to see me do that. And notice too, some of these holes here have to be cut out too. So what we'll do next is, we'll put on these little plastic pieces here on the... I'll go on the ends of the wings here. Make sure you've got the right one though, because if you get the wrong one on there it won't fit correctly. So there is a right and a wrong, or a left and a right. In this case, I need that one there. Um, again, if you're using the connector, you want to screw these in now, get that sorted out. I'm not doing that, so I'm not going to worry about it. So there, that's it, both wings. Um, do you both your wings, and what we'll do after this is look at maybe putting it together, or we could do our horns and mount our servo in. They've given us two different types of linkages. They're a lot better system. But that's good to see they give you an option in this package of the two different types of linkages. Servos are all done and linkages. I've got to still trim a bit more out of here so there's no binding on the on the aileron. So what we'll do now we might just glue this piece on, that's these here. We have a left and a right again, just check the bottom here, it'll be um, angled. Alright, so I stuffed that up. So before you put this on, you want to put that on. So lucky I did lose, use the hot glue and not the super glue. I would have been having to cut this hole out. So you need to put this on first and then the cover goes over that. So I'm going to take this off and redo that. Yeah, we got, so we glued the two plastic pieces on here and um, you gotta screw in this little turn piece here that holds the stabilizer on. Two of these, they go on each wing, just in front of this. Basically, it's just like that. It's the last of the plastics. That little piece here, just on the on the bottom. So I don't use a lot again, just small amounts, enough. Because it will melt this piece. So we're pretty much all done now. All we need to do, we can put it together. All we need now is our electric to put back in and she's ready to go. That's uh, basically the finished product uh, without the electrics, so um, we'll do that in the next video, all the electrics. So that's pretty much it. She looks nice and refreshed again. I can't wait to fly it. It's a great plane to fly the, dot, the Zod Dart. It's um, definitely one of my favourites. Stay tuned for the next part where we're going to do the electronics. It's going to be a pretty quick reinstall for those, I would imagine, because it's just still, it's already set up. It's just a matter of mounting it all. Anyone that's looking at buying the Zod Dart, it's a great plane, I've had it for years, highly recommend it. So stay tuned, see you in the next video guys, have a good one, bye for now.